Okay, so let's start with assassins. Um, so as I've talked about, all the assassins with leaps can be pretty annoying. Uh, this can mean Baxura, Bastet, Fenrir, uh, Hunbat if you see him. Uh, that's pretty much it for all the solar lane assassins. So you don't typically want to be picking Cabracken into them uh, because obviously the fact that they can just jump out of your leap is pretty annoying. Um, in a similar regard really, you, you want to watch out for jumps on the enemy team in terms of all the roles. So the jungler, uh, jungler and ADCs tend to have the most leaps. Uh, Scylla has a leap, but she's really the only mid with a leap, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's the only the kind of mid mage with a leap. So, you want to watch out for that. If they have too many leaps, you don't really want to be picking a Bracken because he's not going to do much for you. You know, people are just going to be able to jump out of his thing. That's pretty annoying. Um, anyone that can't get out, so Rat, Arachne, uh, Loki Esther alt out, which is probably a win for you, honestly. So yeah, any of those are pretty good matchups. Rat's really good, really against uh, Rat's really good matchup for Kraken because you can kind of just block his dashes and just keep him inside your tremble, which is nice. He's also super squishy, and you can just really you can just bop him. Uh, Arachne's pretty good matchup as well because she has lots of slows, but you have slow immunity on your one, so that's quite nice. Similarly for Bastet, if you come up against her in a counter matchup, then it's nice to have the slow immunity. Uh, Loki's pretty easy, honestly. You can bully Loki quite easily. Um, if you can catch him before he goes invisible, you can get off your 1-2 combo to do a hell of a lot of his health, which is pretty nice, especially once you have pen boots on. So that's pretty good. Uh, Bakasura can be a bit of an issue. Uh, the Butcher Blades can really just tear through Gabraken, uh, especially if you just build your Breastplate of Valor early on and you don't go for something with health. Honestly, against back you probably want to be going mid Guardian Mail to your second item, just because you want to shut him down. So yeah, it can be annoying for Gabraken, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Baxura's ult was nerfed quite hard, so he doesn't do that much damage at level 5 anymore. You can kind of survive his burst. It's not just like an instant death. So yeah, for Assassins, I think Gabraken does pretty well against, honestly. Let's move on to Warriors. Okay, so... Blona, um, pretty easy. Um, you kind of just, she doesn't really have any kill potential against you because you're so tanky. You can just clear the wave quite freely. Um, you can interrupt her, if you're boxing her, you can interrupt her bludgeon with your one, which is quite nice. So th that kind of gets rid of a lot of her damage. Um, the disarm doesn't affect you too much because you can just tremble through it. Although she can ult you and stun you at your tremble, which can be annoying. Um, one thing to note is she can disarm you when you're in your one, so you can't get the stun off. So that can be annoying. There's really just a lot of backs and forths in between Bologna and Gabraken, really. You know, one thing counts this, the other thing counts this, this counts this. It's all about how you play it. Um, you've just got to know when to use your abilities. Um, you just Yeah, it's just knowing when to use your abilities, when you can use it, when you can't use it. You know, you don't use your one before she uses your bludgeon, because then she can just bludgeon you and do a lot of damage. But at the same, you know, you want to use, so, yeah. You don't want to use your ult to gank her. Oh, you don't want to use your ult if, you're, if your jungler is coming to gank her. If she has her ult up, because she's going to jump out. So, yeah. You just got to know when to use your abilities, when not to. Uh, Chuck. Um, I pretty much, whenever I come up against Chuck, I just shit on Chuck. Because uh, Cabretton just has way more damage than him, really. And he's a lot tankier. So, yeah. I don't really care about Chuck. Guan Yu is pretty annoying with the protection uh, shred on his Taolu Assault, but you can interrupt it. Um, if you're fast with your ult, um, you can kind of trap him when he's in his ultimate. You could, like, if he's far away from you and he's trying to ult you, then you can block off a corridor and just keep him out. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Hercules is kind of scary, but again, uh, I think Gabraken does more damage than, me, than him and is tankier, so I don't think it's a bad matchup. A bad thing is, if you ult and he boulders, then you can sometimes you can use your ultimate to bounce his boulder and get two hits on you, which can be pretty annoying, so that's something you have to watch out for. Um, so yeah, it's not a bad matchup. Uh, Cyrus can be scary, 
he does pretty well uh, against most gods in solo lane. Honestly, he's such a like he's such a lane bully. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, you have to be a bit you have to be a bit cautious when coming up against an Osiris, and he can jump out to your ultimate as well. So that's something to watch out for. Raven, um, so I kind of trash talked Raven in the last couple of videos I've done, but I think he's pretty good now, honestly. Like the only thing keeping him from being viable is that his ultimate can't be used as an escape. If you could just target it, uh, like a Loki ult, and you don't gain any of the benefits, so you don't, you know, you don't get the sixty percent damage reduction, you don't get the uh, the knock up on the way there, or maybe even you do get the knock up, you just don't get the sixty percent damage reduction if you use it for an escape. Then I think he would be pretty decent because he's got a lot of burst without Raven. Um, in terms of matchup for Cabracken, I think it's fine. Um, like Raven has a little burst, but Cabracken's so tanky doesn't really care. Um, Raven has no way to interrupt his tremors. He has no way to get out of them other than using his two to kind of get the movement speed and you know the uh, CC immunity to get out of them. But if he does that, then he doesn't have any way to block the damage from your 2 from coming off, or your 1, so yeah, I'd say Cabracken does pretty well against Raven. So Mukong's just kind of like, eh, whatever, you can't kill him really, because he's just going to ult away if you try and ult and kill him. Whatever. Tear can be annoying, you can feel us out of your tremors, but again, you should, you should outscale him late game in terms of tankiness and of like team fight presence I think so not too bad. For Manus is terrible uh, he doesn't do anything if he ults you can just now walk away from him because he doesn't have sprint 3 yeah just really whatever okay so let's talk about other guardians you can come up against the solo lane. Athena, uh, she can taunt you out of your tremors which is annoying as hell uh, she can rotate faster than you uh, her wave clear isn't as good as yours, so you can you have a little bit more lane pressure, I guess, which is nice. So you can force her into tower quite a lot, make her lose gold, so you kind of have a gold advantage moving into team fights. Um, but yeah, you just need to worry about her out rotating you, and then outperform you in team fights because Athena has a really good late game team fight. Uh, Taunt is an amazing uh, kind of initiate tool, so it's just something you need to be worried about. But in, honestly, in lane, it's fine. Um, Hades again. Kind of like whatever, you could just clear the wave, ignore him. He's going to be trying to do Hades things. You don't have a way out of his ultimate, which is pretty bad. Um. So yeah, that's something you need to be what like watch out for. And he can silence your your tremors. Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, it's a pretty good matchup for Hades, really. But though Hades gets a lot of good matchups, so it's not really. Uh, something that's kind of completely out of the ordinary. You just need to make sure you're performing in team fights late game. Which you can do quite easily. Sobek, you kind of out clear Sobek. Uh, Sobek's not that great really in solo lane anymore. He has clear problems. Uh, he has problems clearing jungle buffs by himself if his jungler's off doing something else. So yeah, I don't mind Sobek. And then Ymir, Ymir's kind of scary because he has a lot of damage. Uh, same thing with Athena, just make sure he doesn't outperform you in team fights like game and you should be fine. Hey, mages. Who do you see now? Hao Kwang? Yeah, Hao Kwang is scary, man. Whew. He has a lot of uh, kill p potential on you, because you have no CC immunity to kind of juke out his ultimate. Um, he could probably burst you down faster than you can burst him down, although I'm not really sure. Yeah, if he gets you into the ultimate threshold, he's going to kill you, pretty much, so that's something you need to watch out for. But you should outclear him, really. And you can bully him early game, like pre-level 5. Even beyond level 5, really. So yeah, uh, ugh. all these Healy gods, it's just like whatever, you, c you could probably kill them but they'll just, you know, ult out or whatever, they'll heal up. Um, you should probably just go for their blue honestly at the start of the game, just get their blue, go to lane, go get your blue, back to lane, back to speed, back to lane, and then, you know, without their mana they're pretty, pretty terrible. And I would prefer it to have a guardian late game than a Healy Mage, honestly. I think it just brings so much more to the team fight potential, you know, the extra front line. Yeah. 
pretty easy matchup. Um, who else do we see? Ra, similar thing. Vulcan can be annoying. Uh, it's not too bad though. Um, because you tend to clear the way from behind like the enemy uh, melee minions. So his turret probably won't be hitting you, which is quite nice. So yeah, it's not too bad. And as I say, late game I prefer to have a Cabracken than a Vulcan solo, honestly. Like, if you have a good... If you have a good jungler, then your jungler will just be able to completely shut down the Vulcan, really. Like, they should be able to just dive on them. And just shut them down. That's why it's like, I think it's just so greedy having two mages. Or two burst mages. In a team comp, just because you just... You're relying on the enemy team being in a defensive position, and you're on the offense, and you just can't rely on that. Like if you get, if you're against, if you get kind of you know, initiated on hard, you're just gonna lose. There's nothing you can do. So yeah, that's I. That's why I don't like mages in solo lane. <laughs> in certain situations, obviously they can work as a last pick against certain team comps, but yeah, whatever. And then Hunters, um, who do you see now in solo lanes a Hunter? Ool, quite a lot. Uh, Neath, not so much, she's kind of fallen out of her favour now, she was, you know, flavour of the week for a bit after a buff, but now everyone's, fought, like, gotten over her. Apollo sometimes. Uh, he's a bit annoying because he can just mez you out of your uh, tremors without kind of sacrifices at any of his clear. But yeah, his clear is slow anyway, so you should still just out push him even if he does interrupt your tremors. Ool obviously can activate your tremors, but Ool's quite mana hungry, so he doesn't really want to be wasting too much mana. Uh, especially if he goes for like the trans two start, kind of a bit mana hungry. And again, similar thing with mages, hunters in the solo lane. It's like it's fine if you're the aggressor and the enemy's on the defense, but in the other way, you can just get dived so hard. It's just so hard to win a team fight in that regard. So yeah, bit of a I'd say a good matchup for Kabrakan because he's just so tanky. Uh, you can go mid Guardian Mail second item just to really shut them down. Uh, you can go Shield of the Underworld, you know. You know, yeah, you can just go mental on them and just really just completely shut them down. You'll probably push them into tower a lot as well because your clear is probably superior to most hunters apart from Neath, ominous, uh, obviously. But yeah, not a bad matchup. Okay, so that concludes all the god matchups. Uh, as you can see, Cabrakan doesn't have many two, uh, bad matchups, really. Obviously, the only bad matchups you can think of are people who can jump out of his ultimate, or people who can interrupt his tremors very easily, or people who can just, you know, get away from his one. If people can avoid just being charged up with his one, you know. Well, that can be annoying, but he's just so tanky, and he's just so much damage that really, there's not, really, there's not much that people can do against you. I mean, obviously with some, he's susceptible to some junglers, um, let's think here, he could be bad against Suket, because of the true damage from her ultimate can be pretty bad, and she can like close the distance with you really quickly, uh, who else is bad, Thor can be annoying, because of the wall, if you, if you can wall you off from your tower, you have no way of getting over the wall, and that can be an issue. But he's pretty, um, he's pretty uh, hard to gank, honestly, Cabracken. If you're good with the ultimate as well, if you can create space and then quickly 180 ultimate down to kind of put a wall between you and the enemy, that's pretty good for stopping getting ganked. So yeah, it's all about um, just understanding the character, really. His, quits, his kit's quite simple, um, but he, I think he has a lot of subtleties to how you play him to, um, you know, knowing when to use your abilities, knowing when you can get, you know, the maximum amount of damage out of your abilities and stuff. So yeah, that concludes this video. In the next video, we'll be moving on to a gameplay video, uh, me playing Cabracken in solo lane. Um, when I pick these videos, I tend to I tend to just play, you know, multiple games and re I record them all and then I'll watch through them and I'll pick the one that I like the most. Um, I tend to pick games in which I do well. Um, it might seem like, you know, I'm just cherry picking games that I do amazing in just to make myself look better. 
Um, and that's not what I do when I pick games. Um, I don't want to pick a game uh, in which I just stomp people and it ends in 10 minutes because they surrender because obviously you don't really learn much from that. But in a similar regard, I don't want to upload a video in which either I do poorly, you know, I make mistakes early on and then I just do really poorly in lane or if my team does really poorly and we surrender at 10 minutes, I don't want to upload a video like that because obviously that's you're not going to learn anything from that, from that either. It's kind of the opposite way. So I like to pick videos that tend to last about 20 minutes. Um, sometimes they go a bit longer. Um, but 20 minutes is a convenient upload time for me. Um, so yeah, I pick ones that go about 20 minutes. Um, I do well in lane. Maybe I pick, get a 1v1 kill and I can talk to you about how I got the kill. Uh, maybe I die in lane and I can talk to you about you know the mistake I made there and what I should have done to not get ganked or got killed in a 1v1 um, and then obviously I like to have a video with some team fight stuff going on so I can talk to you about what I'm doing in a team fight situation so that's how I pick the gameplay videos um, I hope you all enjoy the gameplay um, if you can give me feedback on that that would be great because I'm not really sure about you know if doing the commentary in post is the best thing or if I should just do the commentary whilst I'm playing so yeah uh, thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you next time for the gameplay. Goodbye.